invite us to stand for the call to worship. The whole world is in God's hands. From the farthest spaces to the inmost places, as people of Christ gathered at table with our sisters and brothers around the world to remember who we are, we praise our Savior. Shall we pray? Let us pray. We'll, with all that we have, with all that we are, we worship you, God of all being. Bless this day. Bless this time. Bless this gathering. Bless this world with your overflowing love. Alleluia. Alleluia. Amen. Our hymns are all communion hymns today, and we begin with number 702. The love of God surrounds us. Let us greet one another in that love, in that hope, in that abiding faith. And I invite us to greet one another with handshakes, if that's what you want, or with fist bumps, and saying, peace be with you, and also with you. So I say to you, peace be with you. And also with you. Thank you.
to see you. I'm glad you're here. Today we have a special day. It, we t today we are taking what? What's that called? Holy, Holy Communion? Do you hear a word inside of that word communion? Is there something that you know in that word? Is there community. Did you have that too? Yeah, thank you, Clint. Oh, hi, guys. Come on in. There's room. Okay. Is there room? Scoot over. Scooch over. So they're, they're community. You know, this is a meal. This bread and this cup. It's got bread and grape juice. Okay. They're in this, in this, in communion. This bread and this cup, we never take that just by ourselves. We always take it with others. And today, I want to remind us that we take it with people all around the world. Look at this. This little baby's from Gu Guatemala. And another one is from Thailand. Gu Guatemala. 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 Yeah. Thailand. See if I can get these all right. Greenland, Greenland. Uh, Mali. What? Whatever they wear, wherever they are, India, USA. USA. Where's that? United States. Right here. Okay. USA, India, South Africa. Whatever they feel Fiji. in Fiji, Fiji. Peru. Peru, babies everywhere, Afghanistan, Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. another USA, but look at this USA person. Where, where do you think that USA person might live? No, I think that that might be a Native American, right? We sometimes call them Indians, but they like to be called by their, their, their names, like Hokak. And if, if Sue were here today, I'd let her say her tribe. I can't say it. A Navajo and Hopi. I sometimes was thinking of Indians. Like, almost 400 years ago, Christopher Columbus thought he was in yeah. India. Yeah, right. And he called the people he saw Indians. I don't right. know why that stuck. You are? Oh, cool. Cool. Okay, so we have a USA. This is a baby from one of the reservations, maybe. Malawi. Malawi. And babies everywhere are beautiful. And there's Rwanda in Africa. And Bhutan. And everywhere, children are loved. They're loved by their parents. They're loved by God. And everywhere around the world, there are children, like you and me, that believe in God. Sometimes they believe in a God that's a little bit different than ours, like the Muslim do, okay, and the Hindu do, the Indians, the people from India and China believe a little differently than us. But we all believe in God. Most, many of us believe in God of uh, some way, and all of us believe that God loves us and that we are called to love one another. We are called to be in community, okay? So when we take communion today, could you remember some of these people? Yeah. And could you remember that communion is in community? Yeah. And could you, let's now pray for people from around the world. Can you name some, everybody can name some, just shout out a, a country from around the world, anywhere. 
China, Thailand, Jamaica. That's, a, that's okay. Huh? The Michigan, right now, where we live, right now, yeah. Let us pray. Dear God, you heard us name the countries around the world and even our own state. Help us to remember children everywhere in all those places who are loved by you and that you call us to love them. Amen. Amen. You may return to your seats. Our first scripture reading is from Exodus, and I want to give you just a little bit of a background about Exodus. Exodus is a, um, there is a, the story is of the people of Israel. They had been enslaved, and then Moses came and freed them because God had listened to their calls. Um, we want to remember this story where where God responds and shows love. I'll let you go for it. If you're following along, it's on page, it begins on page 62 in your pew Bible. So reading from Exodus chapter 16, I'm starting at verse 2. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, if only we died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you've brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, when the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I've heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, fi as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather as much of it as each of you needs, an omer to a person according to the number of persons, all providing for those in their own tents. Thank you. I read for you a parable that most of us don't like. It's the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. And yes, it doesn't feel fair at all, and yet it is. A story that Jesus told us in order to, that we might take heed. I'm reading from Matthew 20, uh, the first 
16 verses, and it is page 897 in your Bibles. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them out into the vineyard. When he went out at about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found some others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired at about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I'm going, doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give you this last the same as I give to you. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I'm generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. No, as I'm reading this today, I remembering something I read earlier this week, and uh, it came to me in a different way as I was reading it. You know, we often go like, oh, this isn't fair, and it isn't, right? You know, it just doesn't feel fair. Um, yet God is generous. And we often say, you know, the, these people, they must have been lazy if they didn't come out at five o'clock before five o'clock. Well, I think the text says that, why have you been standing here idle all day? I was one of those kids that was never picked for a ball game. You know, if they were playing baseball, I was the last one picked. Always. That didn't feel very good. Those that were at five o'clock picked, they may not have been the strongest, the best workers. They may not have come up to bat and done well. How often do we judge those who are receiving the same as us, thinking it's because of what they've not done? Just a word, not to go with the sermon at all. But it came to me as I was reading it today, and I thought, well, Holy Spirit wants me to share that, so I will. Will you pray with me? Pray that the words that I speak are that which the, are led by the Holy Spirit, and that that which you hear is that which the Spirit intends for your ears this day? Let us pray. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Take this bread how did God say it in the wilderness? Did God's frustration eke through? Take this bread here. Was God matter-of-factly? Take the bread. Um, did God let go of God's frustrations and offer the bread with compassion and understanding? Here, 
Take the bread. I know you're hungry. I believe God has emotions. The Bible tells us so. Anger, compassion, joy, concern, love, frustration. I wonder how did God say this? Take this bread. I also believe that when Jesus said take and eat, meaning this bread, his body, his life, he offered it with compassion and care. He offered it to strengthen himself as he walked toward that cross these last days. He offered it to his disciples as they too move through the next hours, the next days, the next years. And he still is the host who says to us, take this bread for the forgiveness of your sin. Take this bread and look toward the heavenly feast. Take this bread and share it. Take this bread in remembrance of me. Take this bread, for it is broken for you and for Jesus. Take this bread. Take this bread, and God rained bread on the complaining, frustrated, starving, scared people walking in the wilderness. They thought they had it good in, in Egypt, and at least now they did, because they said, well, there we had bread enough to eat, and now we're starving out here in the wilderness. And God's, God's like, slavery is never good. And the Israelites had forgotten that they had cried to the Lord under their brutal taskmasters. They forgot how they crossed the Red Sea on dry land, they forgot, but God did not forget them. God did not withhold from them what they needed. God gave them manna. Oh, it was like that frost that, that Lynn just under, you know, shared with us, just a, a powdery stuff, and nobody understood what it was, and it was edible. It was edible. It was bread. Bread they had not seen or eaten before. Yet it filled them. It was enough. The disciples of Jesus also often forgot from, the, from one day to the next even what Jesus had done. My memory today takes me to the stories of the feeding of the multitude where there was just a little bit of bread, maybe five loaves and a couple of fish to share. Hours after being fed, all these people being fed and saying that and going like, wow, hours after they're being fed, just, just hours. The disciples in a boat in a storm again cried out in fear. They had forgotten what Jesus had just done. They had forgotten the power and the compassion that Jesus offered to all the people. They'd forgotten the miracle. They forgot that Jesus had told them of the love of God for them and the, to love God with all their heart, mind, and soul. They'd forgotten to, to trust the Lord. I, I just was talking to one of our, uh, my young people you know that my young people are now in their 40s? So I was just on Facebook, and, and the young woman said, I'm angry with God, but I still trust him. She said, do you understand? I said, yeah, I understand. I'm angry with God, but I still trust him. God is trustworthy. God showed, or Jesus showed them what love looks like as he accepted each one of them as they were, and encourage them to be transformed through his love. Jesus had blessed the bread. He broke it. He gave it to them. Take this bread, he said to the crowd, and the crowd said to one, said to one another, take this bread, take this bread, take this bread, take this bread. And they shared it down the row. Take this 
bread, and there was more than enough. Of course, it fed more than their growling stomachs. They were fed by the love and teachings of Jesus also. They knew that Jesus had forgiven them of their sin, healed them, and had given them hope. Jesus had shown them how to love one another. And then he helped them to share what they had. And yet then in a few hours, they'd forgotten. They'd forgotten what Jesus had just done. Take this bread. When have you cried to God? When has God heard your cries? Like the people in the wilderness and the followers of Jesus, I fear we forget. Do you hear it? We. Sometimes it's a good thing to forget our hardships. However, we must not forget how we cried to the Lord and God answered our cries. We need to remember the bread which, with which God has fed us. Because as the people of the wilderness learned, and as the disciples learned, and as I have learned, and I suspect you have learned, there will be more wildernesses for us to cross. And we will need to remember that God really will give us bread. Whatever the bread is that we need, God will say, remember when I heard your cries in the past? Remember when I fed you in the wilderness? And Jesus asks his disciples, don't you remember when I fed the crowds? Friends, what does God say to us? I do believe that when we're quiet from time to time, one way or another, it could be out in the garden, it could be on the lawnmower, it could be, it could be dusting, it could be doing the dishes. It's not that you have to sit and be quiet, just that you have to quiet your heart. I do believe that God still speaks to us if we're listening. How has God fed us, encouraged us? Is there a spot in your life where you cry out to God now? How has God fed your deepest hungers in the past? And do you see any feeding of your soul being hap happening in these days? Today, we take the bread. We drink the cup. I would be remiss if I did not tell, add the rest of the story. There was enough bread for all. However, each one was to take only according to their needs, and when they took too much, it spoiled. And God provided so that there was enough for, so that they had a day of rest. We do need that day of rest, don't we? And, like the parable of the laborers in the vineyard, we, we may say that we deserve more. It's not fair. Our neighbor has not worked as hard as we have. How is it that they receive the same as us? And we might wonder, when we are starving, do we really need to pass the bread down the row? Do we really need to share what God has offered to us? We may wonder. We may want to hold it for ourselves. But Jesus gave it to all of us. Jesus gave it to the entire world. All of us have been blessed 
we need to be careful that we do not hoard, that we do not believe that we should have much more than others. We need to be aware of what we have. What we've been, been given by God, what has been given to us by God, is intended not only for us to share, but also for us to see God's glory. And then to share that glory. It really is a joy to see I'm going to tell a story on my girlfriend real quick. Um, she has more furniture than she needs. Um, and she finally let it go yesterday. And this family came up with seven kids who must not have had much. And they took her bed, they took her, and it's the bed I've been sleeping on, they took her bed, they took her dining room table, they took her love seat, they took, they, they filled a truck. And, and the woman said, oh, you have blessed us. And my girlfriend said to me, oh, what a gift it was for her, for my girlfriend, to be released of what she had. And how good it felt to just give away. It was all extra but so good it felt to give away. When we have that bread, let us give away. It's what happened in that feeding of the multitude. They kept on passing it on. There are many people hungry in the world, and just like us, they're hungry in many ways. Today we come to the table of our Lord where we are fed alongside of our family members, our friends, strangers, and even our enemies. Today we come to the table to give glory to God for all God has done for us and for all the world. Today we come to the table preparing ourselves to pass the bread throughout the world. Friends, to whom do we need to take the bread God has entrusted to us. Let us pray. When we cry aloud, Lord, you hear us. And you listen to our needs. And you help us find a way through. When our neighbor cries, Lord, you tingle our ears to help them hear, to help us hear. Help us, O oh God to open our hearts as well as our ears and our eyes. Oh God, right now there are a number of people in our own area who are finding a need to, to go to the food pantries. Touch them with your love and touch us so that we might see what we have and what we can share. Oh God, we pray for our neighbors around the world and around the corner. Those who hunger for love from their neighbor, for needs to be met, and those who hunger also for you, 
even if they do not and are not aware of what it means to have your love, your support, your guidance in their lives. God, hear our prayers for all people all around the world who hunger. Help us feed. Show us the way. In Christ's name, we pray, and as Jesus taught us, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us respond to God's goodness with the giving of our gifts. And as we give our gifts, I remind us that not only do we give um, for people around the world and neighbors in need, but that we also need to remember our own congregation and the ministry we do here, and that um, our ministry is also important. And so we, if we're going to give to both, or then we do so if we're going to give, let us remember our own needs here too. I have just said in the previous prayer. You, O oh God, know our needs. You know the needs of the church and the world. Open our eyes to what we have. Open our hearts and hands to what we can give away. Receive our gifts given in generosity with thanksgiving. We dedicate our offerings to creating the world you envision. We dedicate our gifts to Jesus Christ, who gave his all. Amen. You may be seated. We rejoice in the God of life who gives us bread, the fruit of the fruit of the earth worked with human hands, and who makes it into the bread of life. We rejoice in the God of life who gives us As the wheat and the grapes are joined on this table in bread and cup into a visual symbol for us. May our church join together into a visual symbol for the entire world. You'll notice that our, our texts today for the communion are from other countries, and we've also included some of the other languages, and no, we won't be saying them in other languages. But we are singing One Bread, One Body, number 689.
I invite us to recommit ourselves to God and to the healings that we need. I invite us to take a moment for quiet prayer afterwards, acknowledging our broken relationships and how we plan to amend the brokenness with God, ourselves, and others, and creation. Let us pray. I commit God to searching for the healing of my relationship with you the healing of my relationship with myself, the healing of my relationship with others, the healing of my relationship with all your creation. Forgiveness, my friends, is forgetting bad things, remembering good things. Forgiveness is accepting God's love. Forgiveness is knowing God's peace. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You emptied yourself completely, keeping nothing for yourself. Now naked, utterly stripped, you give yourself to us as bread that sustains us and wine that consoles us. You are light and truth. You are the way, the hope. You are love. Grow in us. The ears of wheat are broken and scattered on the hillside to grow. Gathered, they are broken again and scattered throughout the world to make bread. The bread is scattered to each hungry person and broken to make nourishment. Broken and scattered, and some becomes Christ's body. Broken for us, as we are the people of God, scattered through the world, and perhaps broken to give nourishment to others. We receive the bread broken, scattered, and made whole. The grapes, the berries, the milk are gathered from planet and animal, pressed and processed to be poured into cups. The cup of salvation, Christ's love shared amongst us. We drink this cup thirsty, longing, and willing to be poured. I invite us to come forward, for this is the feast of God for the people of God. I invite you to come forward at the direction of the ushers.
Let us pray together. We give you thanks, O Lord, for all the food that has arrived at our table from your generosity. Bless the people who have made it possible from the cultivation of the earth until it arrived to us. Give bread to those who are hungry and to those who have bread. Give us the hunger for you. Amen. Let us tongues and talents employ. Let's sing it with some gusto. 698. guide on the road every day, be your refuge in times of uncertainty, and be your rest in times of fatigue. May the God of life strengthen you when you feel weak, comfort you when you feel sad, and hug you when you feel alone. May the God of life who loves you and knows you cover you with tenderness, the tenderness of a mother forever. Amen. And let the people say, Amen. Amen.